Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's short video, we will be discussing about the constructs that Go provides us to be able to create enumerated constants. As you can see on my screen, on line number 7, I have declared a constant A and set it equal to a special keyword called IOTA. Suppose that we are printing the value and the type of constant A on line number 12 and when I try to run this program, I see that the value of a is zero and type is integer. Uh, now many of you might be tempted to believe that iota is just an alias for zero. Well, that is not what iota is. iota is a special keyword provided in Go, which acts as a counter whose value is incremented with each subsequent use. And we can use iota to create enumerated constants. So what we'll do here is that instead of declaring a as a standalone constant, we will instead declare a inside a constant block. And we will also declare two more constants along with a, which will be called b as well as c. Then let us simply try to print the values of b and c as well. And when I try to run this program, uh, well, yes, I can see that b takes a value of 1 and c takes a value of 2. Uh, so this shows us that the first time that we use iota, it assigns us a value of 0. The next time that we use iota, it assigns us a value of 1. And the third time, it assigns us a value of 2 and so on. The next time would be 3, then 4, then 5 and so on. Along with this, I want to show you that um, once we assign iota to a constant within a constant declaration, uh, we really do not need to assign iota to the next constant declarations. So if I get rid of iota here and I get rid of iota from here, then b and c will automatically be picking up the incremented values of iota. Uh, so in this case, if I go ahead and run this program, we have the exact same output that we had before. b takes up a value of 1 and c takes up a value of 2. And why did that happen? Because the Go compiler automatically assigned incremental values of iota to both b as well as c. Let us now try to declare two more constants here uh, called d and e. Uh, we are setting d equal to iota and e is expected to pick up the incremental value of iota automatically. Then we will print the values of d and e and here we see and what do we find here? we see that the value of d is 0 and e is 1. So the concept to understand here is that whenever the Go program encounters a const keyword, the value of iota is reset to 0. And where, whenever we use the value of iota after encountering a const keyword, its value will begin from 0. So d will be assigned a value of 0 and e will be assigned a value of 1 and if we had another constant say f then it would have been again assigned the value of 2 and so on. Alright, I'll do a very quick code cleanup and the next thing that I want to show you here is that we can perform arithmetic on the iota keyword as well. So what happens when I replace the iota with uh, iota times um, 5, let us say, uh, when I try to run this program, I see that the value of a is 0, of b is 5, and the value of c is 10. So the iota times 5 operation was repeated for a, b, as well as c. So the first time 0 times 5 got a value of 0, 1 times 5 got a value of 5 and 2 times 5 got a value of 10. Um, now this is not only restricted to multiplication, we could have used addition here as well. And there you have it, all of the iota values got incremented by 5 in this case. And we could have even used the bit shifting operator. Let's shift the bits by one place at each increment of iota. And here's and here we see that 0 left shifted by 1. Uh, let me in fact write it down uh, in the comments. So this would be 0 left shifted by 1. And this would be 1 
left shifted by one and this would be two left shifted by one. Uh, so we can see that this value would be zero, this value would be two and this value would be four. Let us check one more arithmetic operation uh, for this time. Let us simply set it equal to minus three and let me replace this in these comments as well. So this would be minus three, minus three and minus three. And when we try to run this, we see that A gets a value of zero minus three, which is minus three. B gets a value of one minus three, which is minus two and C gets a value of two minus three, which is minus one. And that was the usage of arithmetic operations with the IOTA keyword. Next, let us try to see a toy usage of enumerated constants in our programs. All right, my code has been cleaned up. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to declare three constants here called car, bike, and uh, let's call this one truck. So a uh, car will have a value of zero, bike will have a value of one, and truck will have a value of two. Uh, next, I would like to print, um, okay, uh, firstly, I would like to declare a variable a vehicle and assign it the value of bike. Then what I like to do is I would simply like to print the value of the Boolean expression is vehicle equal to bike. When I try to run this program, I see that I get an output of true because the value of vehicle uh, is set to the integer one here, or you can say uh, the value of vehicle is set to bike here. And when we compare the value of vehicle to bike, they will obviously be equal because vehicle is equal to one and bike is equal to one and one is equal to one. So you get an output of true. Uh, but if we compare is the vehicle equal to car, when I try to run this, I get a value of false because one is not equal to zero. All right, I'll revert the equality comparison to bike, but what happens when we don't uh, say initialize the variable vehicle? When I try to run this program, vehicle is no longer equal to bike. So is vehicle equal to truck? Um, well, no, but is vehicle equal to car? Let's run this. And yes, indeed, vehicle is equal to car. And why is that? Because car has been assigned a value of zero and the zero value of any variable of type integer is also zero. So zero compares equal to zero and therefore we see an output of true here. Now, there is a very, very big semantic problem here. Uh, nowhere in our code did we say that vehicle is equal to car. But on line number 17, when we compare vehicle equal to car, we see that it compares equal to true, which means vehicle becomes equal to car in spite of us never making vehicle equal to car. Uh, such a situation can lead to bugs in our program. And as programmers, we really do not want bugs in our applications. So what is the way of solving this problem? Let us quickly have a look. Now, there are two ways that we could go about uh, solving this problem. The first one being that we could declare a constant value which semantically represents an error as far as the domain of these constants is concerned. So suppose I declare a, uh, a constant here called ERRV. Uh, there's nothing special in the name ERRV. It could be ERRV1, it could be ERRVA or anything for that matter, it's up to you. And I said that equal to iota. So any uninitialized variables which want to make use of this domain of constants will now not compare equal to any of car, bike, or truck, but would compare equal to ERRP. Then we can place if checks in our code and handle such cases accordingly. So if I try to run this program till now, you are getting it true. Uh, now we start getting a value of false for the comparison of vehicle with car because vehicle is no longer a car. Vehicle is now a, a semantic error. And here we can see, uh, is vehicle equal to ERRV? Well, yes. The other thing that we could possibly do here is replace the ERRV with the underscore identifier in Go. Uh, we all know that underscore is represents a write-only variable which can never be read 
And uh, so if our domain um, has no work for an error, but we still don't want any of the constants to hold zero values, we could go, go about using the underscore identifier to ignore the zero value for this constant domain. Um, so ERRV won't work, but in this case, when I compare vehicle equal to car, that would evaluate to a false. All right, guys, uh, that is all we had for enumerated constants. And I hope you have a good understanding of the topics now. Just for a recap, I have highlighted all of the main things that we discussed. The first thing was that we discussed about the IOTA keyword itself. Then uh, we discussed how do we declare constants using the IOTA keyword in constant blocks, outside constant blocks and all. How do we reset the value of IOTA to zero? And the compiler does that for us whenever we encounter the const keyword in our code. How do we perform arithmetic operations on the IOTA keyword? And how do we model our constants using IOTA? And how do we avoid zero value errors in such cases? Uh, all of the code that we discussed has been updated in this GitHub repository, AE Dorado slash learning go. So please do check it out as well. And if you like the content of the video, please hit the like button. If you find the content of my channel helpful, please do click subscribe and hit the bell icon to never miss any new updates. And like always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you very soon in a brand new tutorial.